Shroud Manager Christianity's Position Three more tries to recreate the shroud image also have serious problems. We just looked at three image formation hypotheses. Here are three more. The first two claim the image formed by contact with an object. Before we begin, let's consider the challenges common to all image by contact claims. There should be either contact and image, or no contact and no image, right? That's what contact means, to touch. No touch, no image. But that's not what the shroud reveals. If the shroud touched all contours of the face, for instance, there would be a lot of visual distortion, like this. And if the shroud touched only the most elevated parts, there'd be gaps and abrupt edges. There's not. The shroud's face has subtle gradations of color. Now look at the arm. Blood dripped down the forearm and around the elbow. But where's the image? Both the blood and body would touch the cloth, but only the blood left an imprint. These are simple observations, but real challenges for any image-by-contact hypothesis. Revisit video 2.5, which concludes the blood formed by contact, but the image by something else. The first hypothesis is scorching with a heated statue. The shroud image looks like a scorch. Is it? There are practical challenges. Physicist John Jackson's experiments show that the heat will discolor through the thickness of the shroud in about a tenth of a second. So you'd have to move faster than that to superficially scorch the linen. A medieval faker would have to do this with three different objects, such as statues, over some 60 square feet of cloth, using imprecise heat sources like coal, wood, or oil. This all requires dexterity that is extraordinary. One could even say superhuman. In 1532, the shroud was damaged in a fire. This was a happy event for scientists. It saved them the trouble of constructing control experiments in the lab. They compared scorch marks on the actual shroud with the image on the actual shroud and noted many differences. For example, the interior of scorched fibers is colored, but the inside of the image fibers is not and UV light bounces off scorches differently than off image areas. As for the blood first, image second evidence, it should be clear that heating blood will drastically change its character. Jackson's team confirms this, noting that the shroud blood areas are heat degraded around the fire damage but nowhere else. Another contact hypothesis uses a pigment rubbing process. After rejecting all previous attempts to reproduce the shroud image, organic chemist Luigi Garlaschelli claimed his process proves definitively that the shroud was a medieval fake. They placed a linen sheet flat over a volunteer and then rubbed it with a pigment slurry containing traces of acid. A mask was used for the face. They painted scourge marks and then the pigment was artificially aged by heating the cloth in an oven and washing it a process which removed pigment from the surface, but left a fuzzy, half-tone image similar to that on the shroud. Then they painted blood stains and added burn holes, scorches, and water stains to achieve the final effect. Garlaschelli didn't provide detailed third-party microscopic examination of the results, so we can't confirm how superficial the image is, if pigment remains, if brush strokes are evident, and if any fibers are stuck together by the slurry. Two shroud scholars examined photos, however, and noted key differences from the shroud's surface threads and fibers. For scourge wounds, proponents of this hypothesis need to show it's possible to expose real blood and serum to an acidic slurry, bake it in an oven, iron it, and scorch areas with a blowtorch, all while leaving no chemical evidence on the blood or fibers. For the major blood wounds, Proponents need to show the process doesn't change blood chemistry and no image is under the blood. The next hypothesis was proposed by historian and artist Dr. Nicholas Allen. It holds that the image is a photograph, not a contact image. A linen cloth was treated with silver nitrate to make the cloth sensitive like a photographic film. Light reflected off a life-size statue, entered a darkened room through a primitive lens, and exposed the treated linen with its image. The silver nitrate was then washed off. The results are impressive, as you can see. 
but there are problems. Oxford-educated chemist and photographer Dr. Michael Ware agrees the shroud is fake, but says it is not a proto-photo. He notes that Allen assumes without evidence the existence of a lens technology that was unknown for several centuries after the proposed medieval date. We could add the same comment about photography itself. For a full-length image, Ware says the exposure would likely take months, not days. Allen asserts that all the silver has washed off, matching the shroud, which has no traces of silver. However, Ware writes, Surprisingly, Allen cites analytical results that contradict his assertion that the silver has been totally removed. Shroud.com founder and 30-year professional photographer Barry Schwartz adds his take. Any attempt at duplicating the image must match all of its physical and chemical properties, not just a select few. It must also withstand the scrutiny of careful, side-by-side -side comparison to the original. Allen's photo does not contain the 3D information we see on the shroud. The shroud image has no distinct or sharp edges, yet Allen's body image has a very distinct and sharp edge. And Schwartz adds that Professor Allen's mechanism leaves the critical issue of the bloodstains totally unresolved. In the past two videos, we've seen that six different hypotheses for recreating the shroud image all face major hurdles. Next, we go in-depth on the photonegativity and three-dimensionality of the shroud image.